once you integrate to services, basically your next step would be to set up an assignment. And let me go to my history demo course. Right here. And uh, I'm going to assignments. And add assignment. So once you're working on creating an assignment and you'd like uh, student submissions for this assignment to be checked for plagiarism, all you have to do is select the type of submission and we support text entry and file upload. So select either one of those and you will see the plagiarism review option. For the plagiarism review, select plagiarism check since this is the service that we provide, and you can decide when to show the report to students. It can be done immediately after the assignment is created, after the due date, or never. So it's up to you to decide if student sees the report and if they do, uh, when exactly they have access to the report. Uh, so this is it. Uh, for the setting of the assignment. No need to enter any information, simply uh, select plagiarism check and decide when um, students should have access to this, uh, re to the report. By default, it is set to immediately. It means that as soon as a uh, student submits an assignment, we scan it for plagiarism and the result is going to be visible to both uh, students and faculty members. Um, do, do you have any questions at this point? Does it look clear? Yes. Okay. Uh, then uh, let's go to grades. And uh, your grades section is going to look a bit different from what you have in case you're not using uh, plagiarism detection systems. So here, close to um, each and every assignment, <clears throat> I'm sorry, there will be uh, a different color, colored labels, and they mean different percentage of plagiarism. The lowest is uh, blue. I don't believe I have any here. Uh, blue, it means 0%. Then you have green, yellow, orange, and red. Uh, they're marking the severity of the plagiarism score uh, for the particular assignment. If you see the exclamation mark, it means that for some reason <clears throat> we were not able to scan the document. And uh, let me give you a couple of um, cases when the document is not going to be scanned. Uh, the first case would be if uh, the document contains less than 80 characters. So it's about one sentence. And um, one sentence is very difficult to scan for plagiarism because it just can be out of context. So that's why the minimum number of words uh, inside the assignment, it has to be more than 80. So if it's less, you receive an exclamation mark and um, a system uh, notification explaining why the system has not scanned this particular assignment. The other case can be. If, uh, for example, your college decides to uh, give access to plagiarism detection tool uh, for a specific faculty, but not to all of the students within this faculty, it can also be done. So we are not uh, saying that if you're subscribing, you have to enroll all, all of your students. Usually, of course, colleges and schools do. So they provide um, plagiarism tool to everybody. But just in case you'd like to limit access to some particular users, you will see an exclamation mark saying that uh, this user does not have access to our software. So those are two main cases uh, for which we will not generate a report. The first one is technical, and the second one uh, basically covers the flow that you decide to, uh, to have with the educational process. A uh, quick question. Uh -huh. Are there limits to the types of files that can be scanned or does it have to be converted to text and put in the box that we saw earlier? 
uh, we support different file formats. It can be PDF, TXT, uh, Microsoft Word, ODT, this is the Linux type of file, uh, RTF. Yeah, so any, any tax document is something that we can scan for plagiarism. What about Excel files? Uh, no, we do not scan Excel. So it's files. mainly text type documents. Yes, it is going to be okay. text type. Mm -hmm. um, so let's open up the speed grader to see how the report looks like. So once you open up any assignment, you will see the plagiarism score right here. So this one has been 100% plagiarized. For example, this one is 82%. Uh, and for every single submission, you receive a separate plagiarism score. And uh, let me open, for example, this one. Are the boundaries for the colors that are coding the uh, grade book, are those colors with set percentages or how is that determined? Yes, it has set percentages. Uh, I will be able to share the color coding percentage with you. It's done by okay. Canvas, so we simply follow uh, what, the, what they uh, mark as percentage of plagiarism. Uh, so this is the overview of the report. So uh, this is the general percentage of plagiarism that you have. And what you can do with the report is you can print it. If you need a hard copy, uh, you can share it with somebody. If, for example, you'd like uh, someone outside of Canvas to, check, uh, to take a look at the report, you can download it as a PDF. Well, of course, you can close it. And on the right hand side, uh, this is where you can see the list of sources that were used uh, to write the assignment. We detect uh, three types of similarities. In this case, uh, there are two. So this is plagiarism. It's 31% and similarity in quotes. It's almost 9%. So by similarity in quotes, uh, what it means is if something has been formed as a direct quotation, let me see, I'll give you an example. So this one, this is a correctly cited quotation put in the quotation marks. So uh, we put it in a separate section and by default, uh, these 9% uh, were excluded from the overall percentage of plagiarism, but of course you can include it or exclude it. Um, in here is the full reference list uh, from where plagiarism has been taken from. So um, once you're reviewing the source of plagiarism, there are two ways on how you can access uh, the initial source of plagiarism. By following this, um, let me, probably give you just a Wikipedia example as a quick one. By following this link sign, and what it does, it takes you to the full page, the Wikipedia article. But sometimes uh, some articles uh, can be very long. So in order to save you time so that you do not need to read the whole article, what you can do is you can use the second option, which is um, much more popular. So once I click on it, we are actually taking the same page that we have just seen before. And um, we are going to highlight sentences or phrases that uh, were used to write an assignment so that you do not need to read the whole web page. So this is it. It highlights whatever has been taken. As you can see, this is the sentence. And um, this one, and if I go back to the report and select Wikipedia, um, I'll have to see which one was it. So according to, just a moment, let me find it. Hmm. 
Hmm, this is a bit strange. I'll have to check what happened. Let's try to see uh, what else has been highlighted. For example, this one. I'm sorry, this is a bit strange and um, I don't know what, what's going on here. Probably what I will do is I will show you a different example. But um, the idea is that uh, this Wikipedia plagiarism, what we do here is simply highlight whatever has been taken from this page and we show you the actual um, match for the content. Let me open up a different report, just as an example. I have one here that shows reference list as well. Uh, let me find it. I have probably scanned, oh, this one. Okay, let's try it with this one. Uh, the reason why I wanted to show you this one is because we have a third section that I have mentioned and this is called uh, references. And if we are going to find match in the reference list, we will highlight it in green and show you um, what has been taken and cited correctly as a reference list. Of course, it applies the same logic. By default, it is going to be excluded from the overall percentage of plagiarism. And uh, let's see once again, do this quick search. So let me open up this website. Okay. So this is the website uh, that has been used uh, to write the short paragraph. And um, let's see if there is a match. So this is the sentence that we have highlighted right here. And um, mm -hmm. this is the exact same sentence right here, except for um, the reason, probably the reason why I was not able to find a match in the previous case, and I will have to go back and check with that, is because uh, what we can detect as plagiarism is not only word to word match, because what I try to do is uh, find text by copying and pasting it. But we can also detect um, par paraphrasing. So if we talk about synonyms, here it says students. And here I believe it was children. And um, if there is a word order change in a sentence, uh, this is an example, honesty, honor, respect, authenticity, social responsibility. And in the student submission, it was honesty, dignity, respect, reliability, social responsibility. So if students try to play with the word order in a sentence, we'll still be able to catch it. So not just uh, copied and pasted text, which is um, really common type of plagiarism, but also if students try to conceal plagiarism by poorly paraphrasing it, we will also be able to detect it. Um, how, how does the report look like? Does it look clear to use? Yes. Uh, it's, it's nicely done actually by dividing it into those sections so that you can include or not include um, cited material and or uh, the reference material. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, yes, and it is done to every report. And for uh, what, what we do is we can detect plagiarism not only with the online resources, but uh, since students often um, exchange papers, um, give papers from uh, their friends to friends, from siblings um, to one another, uh, what we do is uh, we create a private archive 
of student submissions for every school and college that we work with. And it's important to understand that it is private and it belongs specifically to your college and no one has access to it by, but you. And if you have two students who submit similar assignment, we will track uh, the source of plagiarism and show you uh, for the second student submission that it has been taken from a different student. But if you allow students to resubmit files inside Canvas, let's say um, you'd like student to revise the paper and try to submit it once again, um, the second submission will not be considered as plagiarism from the first submission because we understand who is submitting a file, if it's the same user or if it is a different user. Um, okay, 